Hey everybody, today is National Day of Prayer. I want to thank you for joining us uh, as we pray for our nation. And so I've got some of our pastors and leaders on the stage with me. And today we want to pray six specific areas, uh, over six specific areas in our nation. Now, as we do this, we want you to pray along. Maybe what you want to do is after we pray for something, put it on pause and then you pray for that topic that we're praying for. But as a church, uh, we want to lift these areas up. And I want to start, especially as we've been walking through Revelation and looking at those seven churches, I want to start by praying for the church in America. So would you join me? Father God, you have said that you're going to build your church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. That God, your church is uh, your bride and it is... Lord, the organization that you're using to, um, to bring the gospel to this nation. And yet, Lord, so many churches today are in trouble. Some because they have walked away from your word and they're allowing things in the church that shouldn't be there. Some because of no vision and, and maybe tradition has taken over. Some churches even feel defeated. So, Lord, I pray right now that you would um, strengthen your pastors, that you would strengthen leaders, that the church would return back to what you've called us to do. I pray for pastors who will boldly preach the truth from the pulpit, for, um, for leaders who will live it out, for those in the church, that God will demand that um, the church carry out the mission that you've given us. And so, Lord, we, we lift the churches up in America because we know that change is not going to happen through the government or through the economy. It's going to be through your churches preaching your word boldly. And we lift that up to you today especially as we pray for our nation. Hello, everyone. My name is Joel Ramos, and I am the Spanish community pastor. And at this moment, I, I just want to invite you all to help us pray for the unsaved uh, across our country, for our unsaved um, kids and, and students and our, un, our unsaved spouses, uh, that they would come to know. Now, we know that the Holy Spirit does the work, but we accompany Him through our prayers, that they would come to know Jesus. I'm going to pray in Spanish, and you go ahead and pray in your own language. Amantísimo Dios y Padre Celestial, Dios de infinita bondad y misericordia, Gracias, Señor, por tu amor y por Jesús, nuestro Salvador. De esta manera, Espíritu Santo, nos reunimos en un solo pensar, en un solo espíritu, para pedirte a ti por la salvación de los que todavía no te conocen, nuestros hijos que todavía no te conocen, nuestros cónyuges, nuestros familiares, nuestras amistades, a través de toda esta nación, Señor, Ten misericordia y extiende tu mano salvífica, oh Dios, y sálvalos que puedan conocerte. Te pedimos que tú ablandes corazones, oh Señor, para que tu verdad penetre y cambie vidas. Te lo pedimos en el dulce nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joel. Hi, I'm Emile Crawford, one of the worship leaders here at Family Church, and today I've been challenged to pray for our families, not only for our families, but for marriages, for those mixed families, for single moms, single dads, for the kids in the school. So join me as we pray for such an important uh, piece of who we are as a family, which is the family core. So let's pray together. Father, your word says in Psalms 133:1, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Father, this past year has been such a challenging time for the family unit, Father. There's been job losses, quarantine, just dysfunction galore, Father, but you are still good. You are still present, Father, and I just pray for every single family represented in Family Church, Lord, but I also pray for every family that extends from that, Father. I pray for our kids, Lord. I pray for those single moms and dads that are struggling right now, Lord. You are a provider. You are Jehovah Jireh, Father God. We thank you so much for your peace, 
Lord, I know that there's families that might be in the middle of strife right now. Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit invades those homes in Jesus' name, Father God, and that there is just this peace that surpasses all understanding, Father, that those kids are protected in the name of Jesus, Father God, that regardless of that upbringing of this function, they're going to grow up, Father God, to know you, to love you, Father God, and that's going to be the legacy, that we're going to see the power of your Holy Spirit, the power of the name of Jesus and what Jesus accomplished for us, Father, that we can stand in that truth. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And I pray a special prayer for those babies, Father God, for the kids and those families, for every uh, child and student that belongs to Family Church. I pray for boldness as they're in the schools, Father God, that they can shine and be salt and light, Father God. Invite their friends to come to student ministry and get pumped up for you, Jesus. I thank you that this church is such a sweet family for myself. Father God, and I just pray a special blessing, like I said, for every family represented, Father, and the extended families that are here as well. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Hi, Charles Cooper, a community pastor here at Family Church, tasked to pray for our government, to pray for those who are in our national leadership, for the wisdom of God to lead them and the humility to seek his leadership. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, great God, you stand so supremely in universe, so perfect and so complete. And yet, Father, as a national people, as a nation, we pride ourselves on our wealth, uh, on our superiority in defense, uh, and our commitment to all things natural. We are yet destitute, for our wealth is only physical, not spiritual. Father, for our defense is physical, it is not spiritual. And we see the results of that as a nation, Father, we believe, because of Jesus Christ that is in decline, not in his protection of righteousness and holiness defined by your word, but by man. I pray, Father, that you'd help our leaders in Washington to know and understand the need for your sovereign grace and mercy. Father, I would pray that there would be a true sense of repentance, a true sense, Father, of bowing, our prideful hearts, our arrogance and pompous uh, attitude, that we would be stricken with the sense of your need for us to recognize you, to look to you, and to depend on you alone. I pray, therefore, Father, as this national day of prayer, that it would be national in our hearts, not just one day, but for the rest of this year, as we wrestle with the pandemic and all of the negative outcomes from that, that somehow we would see the light that can only shine from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Debbie McCann, Director of Assimilation, and the pandemic has brought so much more loneliness and hurting people to the forefront than we've ever seen before, at least for me in my whole life. And um, we're praying for them today. Lord, we lift up the lonely and the hurting because there are so many. And I pray that you will absolutely pierce our hearts and that you will open the eyes of our hearts and our eyes that when people come into the church, that we recognize that they are hurting and that they are lonely. And they're here to have fellowship and to meet people and to be at one with you. And we have an obligation and a responsibility, but more than anything, we have a privilege to meet them where they are. And I pray, Father, that we are going to recognize the tissues balled up in a hand, the red eyes, the confusion, whatever it is that's just bringing them here. And maybe they don't even know why they're here, but they just want to be around people. And we call ourselves a family. And Lord, I pray that we welcome them in as family, that they are going to know when they get here that we understand that we want to meet them where they are, that we are going to walk with them and pray for them and encourage them to the point where someday they will be able to do that with others. That's the whole goal, is to watch as, and help in the transformation as they become Christ followers and image bearers. And Lord, we thank you so much for um, just being able to do this here in the church. But Lord, I ask that 
each one of us will be prompted to look outside the church in the context of the church, but out in our communities and neighborhoods and, and workplaces and that we will see the hurting there and we will be able to point them to you, that we will practice the one another's and that you are going to be glorified through every bit of it, Lord. And we're all going to be blessed because we were obedient to you. And we ask it all in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Hi, I am Lester Dornas, Brazilian community pastor here at the Family Church. We are now going to pray for the nation, economy, and all the issues about the financials and job that our country is suffering today. I will pray in Portuguese, please. Please, pray with me. Senhor, nosso Deus e nosso Pai, nós louvamos o Teu nome por esse país. Nós Te agradecemos pela história desse país. E colocamos agora, Pai, neste Dia Nacional de Oração, a América diante do Senhor. E pedimos, Senhor Deus, que Tu abençoes a economia deste país. Nós sabemos, Pai, o impacto impacto da economia na vida das pessoas, das famílias, de diversos setores da sociedade. Mas nós sabemos também, ó Pai, que este país pertence ao Senhor. E nós pedimos em nome de Jesus que o Senhor estenda a Tua mão santa, poderosa e graciosa sobre as mentes que administram as coisas da economia neste país. Cada pessoa que tem, ó oh Pai, a oportunidade de tomar decisões. Cada pessoa que influencia, Pai, nos rumos da economia da América. Que o Teu Santo Espírito possa estar guiando essas pessoas, dando-lhe sabedoria vinda do alto, para que a economia possa prover para as pessoas condições de vida melhor a cada dia. Toma conta, Pai, do nosso, da nossa grande casa chamada América nessa questão da economia, das finanças, que as pessoas que estão sem o seu trabalho possam, oh, Pai, encontrar um novo trabalho. Aqueles que perderam, oh, Pai, horas de trabalho possam recuperá-las para que as suas famílias cresçam e se desenvolvam na Tua paz. Eu peço a Tua bênção sobre a economia da América em nome de Jesus. Amém. Amém. I want to thank you guys for joining us in this short video, and may this kind of be just a, a seed to lead us all to pray, not just today, but like Coop said, every day for our nation, to pray for families, to pray for revival in this nation, to pray for those who are lonely, to pray for those who are unemployed and for our economy, and then to pray that the church truly would be the church. I want to encourage you to share this with others and have others pray. And, um, and let's, let's ask God to do a mighty work in our nation. This year, more than ever, I think I've been drawn to the fact that prayer changes things, and we have an opportunity to intercede on behalf of our nation. So let's do that together. Love you guys. If you're in town, hope to see you this weekend in one of our Uh, one of our campuses, one of our services. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Blessings.